Dr. John Farber uh, from Manhattan, he bought the farm in 64. They were looking for a manager and uh, he had heard that the best farmers were in Holland. My parents had immigrated to Canada, bought their own farm there. We're still getting all the magazines from Holland and wanted to move to the US. My father saw the ad, he talked to John and they got together and he decided to move here and uh, start as a farm manager. I was 10 years old, I think, when we moved to the farm. You know, I loved farming, and do I go work somewhere, do something that maybe I don't like, just so I can retire early, or do I do something I really love to do all my life? And I took the latter. It's a 1,500-acre farm. The farm has, I think, about 160 tillable acres. We lease land from a lot of different landowners, and I'd say a third of that is pasture. We slaughter probably about 65 animals a year, and we sell all the meat retail from the farm. And that was our goal from the beginning when we started. We wanted to build up the retail business so that we could sell most of our beef that way. This farm was originally a pilot farm for the Watershed Ag program and started in 1995. It was a 120 cow dairy farm. In 2005, it transferred over to a beef farm and now they have about uh, 90 brood cows. In the early parts of the program when it was a dairy, they installed several practices related to the dairy farm. As the farm has changed, we've been able to use some of the old practices. So today we're gonna be looking at the old dairy barnyard that is now being utilized for the beef cows. We're also gonna take a look at the new feeding pads for the beef herd, as well as some exclusion fence that was tied to that, and a spring development so the cows are able to access water without having to be in the brook. So this is the old barnyard from back when the dairy was here. It was an exercise lot. Since then, it's become a beef uh, feeding pad, so it's serving a new purpose. Back when we had the dairy, this was just a big, messy, yard and uh, when they put this yard in for the cows it was just a big improvement to be able to clean up manure and uh, control it. And it's worked well as a feeding pad for the steers we keep in here all winter. And we were a pilot farm initially, one of the first 10 pilot farms. When we switched to beef they were right there to help us. The watershed's been very flexible in, in helping that along and helping people change from one farm activity to another. <laughs> One of the newer BMPs we installed, which is a spring development and a water trough, it serves two purposes. It allows them to water while they're out here on pasture. It also is the water source for at least half the herd in the wintertime when they're on the winter feeding pads. Out here, John practices rotational grazing. He's got different paddocks set up to be able to move the cows. It keeps the grass productive. He's not having to feed hay as early as he would necessarily if they had access to everything all the time. We don't rotate on a three to four day basis, but probably about a week, week and a half. Kind of on a slower but bigger scale, I would say. We've also done exclusion fence here, backside of the brook, so they are fenced out of that water course for majority of the year. It's a continuous flow, and it'll flow like this year round, and it keeps it from freezing in the wintertime, and it's actually worked quite well. We used to come up here and like chop holes in the ice. It's much easier this way. It's good for the cows, too, because uh, they do drink a lot of water in the winter. When they're eating dry hay, water is an important factor. This is one of the two winter feeding pads we installed. Initially, it was a, a gravel pad, but this pad was so intensively used, it just wasn't holding real well and it was getting to be hard to clean. A year or two after it was put in, we put a, a coat of blacktop over our gravel pad. It's easy to clean. I think the darkness of the pad makes it nice in the winter time. It seems to hold the heat and it scrapes up really easy. We haven't had any issues with cows slipping or falling on it. It's just worked very well. We're also in the nutrient management credit program. By collecting all this manure, we get credits from the watershed money to use on the fields. We use a lot of that money for liming or manure spreading related equipment. So that's a nice perk from the watershed that we get. And this is all part of it as far as being able to collect the manure and uh, keep track of it. We signed up as a pilot farm because we thought we we're better off to get in on the front end of this than to wait for something <laughs> to be dictated to us. Yeah. And uh, it's been great. I mean, uh, I think we took the right approach. DEP and, uh, and WAC have worked together to really make the program work. And uh, it's the best approach we could have came up with. Mm -hmm.